Hello everyone and welcome to the course of 3GPP release 18 by Telcoma Technologies. So in this course we are going to discuss about third generation partnership project release 18. This is the new uh, release by 3GPP and it has all the advanced plans for the 5G technology. That means we can say that beyond 5G all the advanced features that are discussed in the telecom standard by the 3GPP. 3GPP release 18. This release is basically so that we can identify the different topics for the immediate and longer terms and why we require the immediate and the longer terms for the enhanced mobile broadband services, non-enhanced uh, mobile broadband evolution and all the cross functionalities for both the enhanced mobile broadband and non-enhanced mobile broadband driven evolution. So 3GPP release 18 which has all the advanced plans for the 5G, it has the plans for enhanced mobile broadband, non-enhanced mobile broadband and also the cross functionalities between the both. Let's discuss about its timeline. So this is 3GPP release 18 uh, timeline. It has like 20 uh, 22 timeline from 2020 2021 2022 and beyond so this is a completion of release 17 and release 17 we had discussed about in our courses now this is a consolidation of the release 18 package approval and release 18 work will further so what are the list of the topics that are discussed in the release 18 of 3GPP? It has evolution of downlink MIMO, a multiple input, multiple output, evolution of DL MIMO, uplink enhancement. It covers the uplink enhancements, mobility enhancements. It has all the additional topological improvements, IAB and the smart repeaters. So it has advanced topological like uh, improvements of IABs which are integrated access and backhaul and smart meters. It has ex uh, enhancements for extreme reality, side link enhancements and red cap evolution is there. Red cap, what is red cap? We had discussed in our course. NTN non-terrestrial networks evolution, evolution fraud broadcast and multicast services it has expanded and improved positioning also then evolution of duplex operation other than this it carries your artificial intelligence and machine learning next is network energy savings additional RAN 1, 2, 3 candidate topics and all the RAN 4 enhancements. These are all the list of the topics that are that will be covered in a release 18 of 3GPP. Now let's discuss about evolution of this um, downlink MIMO. So what are the example areas for the evolution of the downlink MIMO? Like it covers uh, further enhancements for channel state information like mobility, overhead, etc. It covers your evolved handling of the multi transmission reception points and multi beam also. And CPE which are customer premises equipment specific consideration. Now we had discussed about the MIMO also. MIMO is there in a 4G also, 5G also. So example areas there may where we require evolution in this technology. So we require enhancements for the channel state information like enhancements in mobility, overhead, etc. There should be evolution in handling how it is going to handle multi transmission reception points and the multi beam and CPE specific consideration which are customer premises equipment. This multi antenna technology and which is also known as multiple input multiple output it uses several transmitters and several receivers so that it can have improved spatial degree of freedom and also has special signal processing technology for the transmitter and the receiver. So let's discuss like uh, 
taken into a for a given amount of the radio spectrum resources this mimo it maximizes the transmission reliability and also it maximizes the spectrum efficiency of the radio links this basically improves or increases the capacity it expands the coverage and also improves the data rate so we have different configurations for the mimo enhancements like we had downlink 6 and 8 receivers enhancements for the advanced user equipment with the large number of receivers that means larger number of receivers in greater than 4 antennas so it supports your various demod architectures it has improved higher order mimo performance and it can reduce the sounding overhead so the different key aspects of this it includes that it can exploit your demod architecture which has llr combining it can also optimize csf for each group and optimize the code word to the layer mapping so what is this llr this is basically for the performance analysis like this is for log likelihood ratio so this is like basically method in mimo harq so it is basically log likelihood ratio and llr combining methods are used for harq in the wireless communication system Uh, this higher ido, uh, order mimo optimization has dmrs overhead reduction reference signal dual modulation reference signal overhead reduction it has null dmrs so that it can has better demod rnn es, uh, estimation now next is exploit the antenna correlation like it has partial spatial sounding to reduce the signaling srs overhead sounding reference signal overhead and it has ue assisted full channel reconstruction so mimo enhancement like demodulation architecture 6 oblique r 8 receivers now enhancements for the advanced user equipment with the large receiver antennas like it has sounding reference signal grouping so partial spatial sounding here less ports are sounded in nature here the ue reports the correlation between the antennas and the g node b and it can reconstruct the full channel what is the benefit of this that we can reduce the sounding overhead and we can improve the ue power efficiency so if we improve the ue power efficiency that means we can achieve the performance which is similar to the full sounding now next one is mimo enhancement downlink 6 oblique 8 rx which has dmrs overhead reduction for the customer premises equipment ue is with greater than 4 receiver and greater than downlink a uh, four downlink layers we can increase the orthogonal ports per symbol that means we can increase for example eight ports dmrs time bundling is there for lower low doppler channels next is super qam modulation qam as quadrature amplitude modulation we can have enhanced receiver to enable this super qam modulation that means 1024 qam for frequency range 2 and 4096 qam for frequency range 1 there is a ran rf ran for requirement and it is applicable for 256 qam and it could apply to higher order modulation here no g node b or ue rf impact or requirements are there higher mobility enhancements so it has its specification impact like it has bundle like 
it can exploit your channel time correlation so how it can exploit the channel time correlation by a csi extrapolation that means ue can report a bundle of multiple reports to capture the doppler information it can g node b can extrapolates the csi for the further pdsch transmissions it has the specification impact that the bundled csi rs information or transmission like it has sufficient time domain density for the doppler estimation bundled means and bundled csi reporting means that there is efficient time domain csi compression next is doppler aware csi type selection so for a given ue mobility some csi type is preferred like we can prefer low mobility type 2 uh, for mo low mobility type 2 csi is always preferred for medium mobility there is a bundled csi which is preferred and for high mobility type 1 csi or semi loop semi open loop csi is preferred prefer the proposal for this that network can configures the multiple csi type in one report configuration the ue provide this type recommendations ue initiated csi feedback there are some issues that in release 15 and release 16 a csi is per the network request channel state information is per the network request the network will trigger new CSI reporting on upon identifying the outdated CSI and it is based on HARQ acknowledgement. This procedure consumes large latency between the failed PDSCH and updated CSI. And thus it causes inefficient rate control in high Doppler scenarios, high Doppler scenarios like ultra reliable low latency communication scenarios. Now it has some key ideas. What are the key ideas that UE initiated CSI feedback so that it can enable more efficient rate adaptation. There are triggering mechanisms, CSI measurement resources are there, there is a, uplink, a reserved uplink channel to carry the CSI and also it has various processing criteria like CPU, reference resource, timeline and priority rules. Thank you.